Well, good morning, church. It is so good to see each and every one of you. Happy Sunday. I am so glad that you are here this day, a beautiful day that God has given to us, and I am very, very thankful to be in the house of the Lord with you this day. Church, I've got several things to bring to your attention this morning, but as we begin, if you would, take note of that attendance pad, please. And if you would, mark that you were here to worship the Lord and pass that on to your neighbor and or uh, family member. Uh, a couple of things, and I would just invite you to look over the bulletin and get familiar with what's going on. I, I do want to uh, highlight the backside of our bulletin, our Holy Week schedule, as well as uh, a, a mission opportunity. And if you really want to make a difference during the uh, Holy Week schedule, there's an opportunity to be in mission. There's also several services that move us through Holy Week as we approach uh, the resurrection of our Lord on Easter Sunday. But a couple of things that I wanted to let you know about, uh, some folks that I want to, uh, to recognize this morning as well. Cade Nutt, there he is. Cade, if you will stand, the son of Steve Nutt and Sandy DeVille, his grandmother, all seven foot... Seven foot, four inches right here. He is in our presence. Cade, we are very proud of you. God bless you. Are you ready for this? He's only 19 years old, too. Can you believe that? God bless you, brother. We are very, very proud of you. So I wanted to say uh, hello there. Uh, also, church, if you will take note uh, there on the hospitality table, we have uh, Easter lily form. So if you will like, uh, if you feel so led, fill one of those out, put it in the offering plate, bring it by during the week. We will adorn the stage, as they say, with Easter lilies uh, during uh, Easter Sunday. It's a beautiful sight, so if you would like to fill one of those forms out for a family member, for a friend, somebody uh, that you love, that you would like to uh, celebrate, uh, please do that uh, as well. I did want you to know this, church, we, we've had some adjustments on this stage, but here's what's going on. This upright piano was in our choir room, so we want to uh, offer an acoustic sound for you uh, in worship. We also got uh, another uh, electronic keyboard that is on the stage, so Hannah will be uh, playing both. As soon as we get that mic'd up, uh, Hannah will be playing uh, from that, so looking forward to that. That will certainly be a blessing, so I wanted to let you know uh, about that. Uh, also, two other things that I wanted to let you know about. Uh, we had a, a, a significant milestone happen this morning. Uh, the United Methodist men, they have uh, elected a new president, uh, our uh, former uh, president, Henry Simons. There he is. Henry, if you will please stand up. He was ready to roll off, and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for your service, for your faithfulness to the men and to your church. It, it, it is known and it is appreciated. So who is rolling on as the president is Jason Haynes, and he is a 1030 worshiper uh, along with his family. So I wanted to let you know that, and we will certainly document that uh, in, uh, in our files and um, paperwork. But Henry, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. What, what a blessing. Absolutely, you are. So thank you. Thank you to you and, and to Wilma as well. Uh, lastly, uh, we need to do uh, April birthdays. April birthdays, it, it, it feels like the spring. There, there's a sense of um, spring and Easter in the air. So if you have an April birthday church, please come down. Let me recognize you. Tell us who you are and what date in April you were celebrating your birth, and then we will sing the birthday song together. So if you would, come on down. Check one, two. Okay. All right. A lot from the choir. Yeah. Yeah. Quality and quantity. That's right. Absolutely. Uh, folks, uh, it, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll go ahead and begin. So the wife and I had all of our children in April. Uh, so uh, pray for us, please. 
Uh, we have uh, Sawyer and Madison, our twins, on the 11th. And then, uh, let's see, Luke is on the 23rd. And Noah's on the 28th. So they, uh, that yeah, yeah, they, they would be up here. So Lillian, if, uh, if you would. I'm Lillian Holly. My birthday is April 29th, 1964. I will be 58 years old. I'm Hannah Potter. Um, April 4th, 2000, I'll be 22. Skylar Floyd, April 27th, I'll be 46. Sandy DeVille, April 29th, I'll be 72. Can't beat that. Andy Powell, April the 18th, 1969, I'll be, I guess, do the math, 53. Not real good at math. Amen. Well, well let's applaud these folks. Andy, would you like to sing your birthday song? Thank you, Andy. Thank you. And, and we'll give Hannah just a moment uh, to get up. We, uh, hold on, folks. Before, before you sit, we want to sing the birthday song for you. Uh, so, congregation, if you would, please stand. Let's uh, sing these uh, wonderful folks a happy birthday, and I want to pray over you. Hannah, if you would. folks let me pray for you okay don't go away just yet okay let me pray for you heavenly father in the name of jesus christ what a what a beautiful day it is what a beautiful day it is to worship you god and to celebrate these births oh god uh it, it is so true quality and quantity is here before us bless these lives bless their families lord and we pray that their april birthdays are truly truly a blessing lord and a benefit and it will be truly an extraordinary day for them we ask this in jesus holy name amen happy birthday folks god bless you Right. Well, praise God for that. Uh, church, here is our theme for this morning. Uh, as I was reading the scriptures from the book of Isaiah, what came to me is that God is a way maker. God is a way maker. So looking forward to uh, looking at the word of God with you and exploring that. As we begin this morning, Hannah will center our hearts and our spirits with a gift of music, if you would. Please enjoy.
Very touching. Church, please allow me to offer a word of prayer for us this morning. If you would, bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, O oh God, that you sent Jesus, your Son, to be our way back to you, not only as a, as a sacrifice, but as an example of your words and truth. He came as a testimony to your word, enduring forever and to point us to your absolute truth. Help us today, O oh God, as we submit ourselves always to your way. And we ask this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Church, I'm going to ask if you would to please stand for our opening hymn of praise. Thank you. One of my absolute personal favorites, Sandy. Thank you for that. That was, that was a blessing. Church, as we are standing, okay, as believers, we need to be doing something very important now. You see, believers need to get into the habit of being in a standing kind of culture, standing up for what we believe. And that is exactly what we are doing now, church. So I want you to always think about those things that we stand up for for that is what we believe as absolute truth so let us now direct our attention to this affirmation of faith otherwise known as the apostles creed please join me i believe in god the father almighty maker of heaven and earth and in jesus christ his only son our lord who was conceived by the holy spirit born of the virgin mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
I'm going to ask now if the ushers will please come forward for this morning's offering. And as they do, church, allow me to offer a word of prayer for us this morning as a way of giving God thanks. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, O God, we celebrate this day, Lord, because you have called it good. You have breathed life into it. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, what a thanksgiving it is to be here, to worship, O God, to glorify your name, because really, Lord, that's what it's all about. That is what your word commands of us to do. Lord, may we do it faithfully. And now we have this time to respond in faith and say, Lord, use me. Use my gifts as well to build up your kingdom and to make Jesus known. Bless this offering now. In our Lord's name we pray. Amen. <clears throat>
I'm so glad to see all of y'all. Well, a few of y'all. Here we come. Come on, guys. <coughs> I love it. Where'd you get that? From Miss Rita. I should have known it was from Miss Rita. Yeah. Hey, how are you? Okay, y'all. So um, I have these. Who? Anybody know what these are? Sticky notes. notes. Okay. Do you use these at your house? Yeah. yeah you use these at your school? Yeah. What do you use them for? Oh, okay. Well, that's pretty cool. That's very cool. Um, I even saw, I was watching um, a video on my phone, and they were making little frog rings out of, I know, I, I know, I know. It kind of confused me, too. But So, did y'all know that Post-it notes were a mistake? No. I, they were. Can you believe it? I know. I mean, and they are like... So there's a company called 3M. That's who makes post-it notes. And so they also make scotch tape, which I love. How many of y'all love scotch tape? Oh, I love scotch tape, okay? So the same company, 3M, that makes scotch tape makes post-it notes. And so there was a scientist at 3M, and he was working on trying to improve the glue that they use on the tape, okay? So he came up with a new formula for the glue, but the thing was, it made it stick great for a little bit, but then it didn't. Then it, you could peel it off. And he was like, oh, well, that's not what I need glue to do. That, I mean, glue needs to stick, and this glue is not sticking. But instead of just chunking it in the garbage can, which some of us do when we, I mean, you ever made a mistake and you just chunk it in the trash? Okay, so he's like, I'm going to give this to the other scientists, because there are lots of scientists that work there. I'm going to give this to the other scientists and see if they can do something with it. So he passed it off to some other scientists, and this one scientist named Art invented the Post-it notes. And now they sell more Post-it notes than they sell Scotch tape. And it was a mistake. Okay, It wasn't even what they intended for it to be, and it turned out to be better. So, I think there's something for us to think about there. Sometimes we try to do things in life, and they don't turn out exactly the way we thought they would. Has that ever happened to you? You ever started to do something, and it didn't turn out just exactly? I mean, you know, it can be baking a cake. Oh, that happens to me sometimes. I start out to bake a cake, and it, you know, or I start out to do a really nice thing, and it doesn't turn out the way, or I start out to do... Anything you can start out to do, and it just doesn't turn out the way you wanted it to. And then you can get mad. Have you ever gotten mad because something didn't turn out the way you wanted it to? Hmm, maybe. Or you can get sad. You can go in your room and cry about it. Okay? Or you can talk to God about it. You know? You can say, God, this didn't turn out just like exactly like I planned for it. And you know what God does a lot of times? God takes it and turns it into something better than it was supposed to be in the first place. So that's what happens when you give it to God. God can take something like sticky glue that doesn't stick like it's supposed to and turn it into post-it notes and you can make a million dollars, okay? God can take our mistakes and point us in a new direction. Maybe we weren't going in just the right direction that God wanted us to and we got kind of, and God just turns us in the right way when we ask for that, when we give it to God, when we don't stomp our feet and throw down in the floor, ah, this didn't go the way I wanted it to go, or go in our room and slam the door, okay? If we take a breath and we say, you know what, God, this is not going the way that I wanted it to go. I need you to show me the way this needs to go. And then lo and behold, you find out, you figure it out, God shows you the way, and it goes in the right direction. God can take our failures and turn them into great successes. But we can't get so dug down in our failure that we don't allow God to do that. So the next, thing, next time something's not going exactly the way you think it should go, should you throw down and have a fit about it? No. Do you think you might want to throw down and have a fit about it? Possibly. 
But that's not the answer. Should you go in your room and slam the door and scream and yell and cry? No. Okay? Take a breath. Say, God, show me. Show me where I need to go with this. And that goes for, th- that goes for things at school, too. You know? Sometimes that test doesn't go just the way you thought it was going to go. You studied and you studied and you studied, and the teacher gives you the test, and you're like, where did she get these questions? They don't have anything to do with what I've studied, okay? But, but you know, even if it goes the wrong way, maybe that's something showing you that you need to study differently or you need to study more. I'm talking to the big kids sometimes, and they're, oh, I don't study. What do you mean study? Woo, it's time. That maybe we need to. I know, I know. Some of y'all say the same thing. I don't need to study. But there's going to come a point when you do. Not here, and I know your mama's already told you that, so we won't go about that now. But just want you to remember that even when things are not going the direction you want them to go, God can turn them in the new direction. All right? Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Lord, help us to remember that you can turn our failures into success if we trust you. We ask this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. All right. Spoke and made the sunrise to light up the very first day. You breathed across the water and started the very first wave. It was you.
Appreciate that. Thank you, Gap Band, and certainly to Mary Jo for that good word that I know spoke to each and every one of us this day. What I'd like to do now is make a, a very important transition to uh, spending some uh, needed time with the Lord uh, in prayer. And how I want to do it is by going to the Word of God first, to kind of put our hearts there, put our eyes and our faith to uh, this wonderful prophet named Isaiah. This comes from the 43rd chapter, verse 21. What I'm going to ask is that you and I, we own these words by offering them together unto the Lord. So please join me and let us offer these responsibly. This people I have formed for myself. They shall declare my praise. Amen and amen. Church, let us now go to the Lord in prayer, and as we do so, let always our words, our actions bring praise unto the Lord. And as we now center our hearts and spirits in an attitude of prayer, I want you to think about God as a way maker when things, at least in our own limited knowledge and know-how, don't seem as though they can go any further, we can't go any further, because at least in our own limited viewpoint, there is only an end. God is a way maker and he creates new beginnings always, a way possible. Holy God, we come before you now in prayer, lifting to you the joys and concerns, the hopes and dreams of our lives. May we always be open, Lord, to your voice in our lives, that we may see with new eyes and hear with new ears, the direction that you will have us to go. Lord, bless, we pray, this gathering of your faithful, that we might grow and flourish in your love and grace for the purpose always to which you have called us. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, hear our prayers for those whose lives have touched us those who are in pain in this very moment, those who are ill, those who are absent, those whom we grieve for. May we touch their lives not only through the power of prayer, but through our lives and actions as well. Lord, guide us, bless us, up uplift us, and hold us. For we, Lord, are your children, your scripture says, called to the purpose of being Christ followers 
in this world. Lord, hear our prayers, those spoken and those hidden also in our hearts. And we pray this prayer always in the saving name of Jesus Christ, who gave us the Lord's Prayer that let us now as the body of Christ pray together. Please join me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy way. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. Church, I am turning now to uh, the book of Isaiah. Isaiah is considered a major prophet in the Old Testament uh, scriptures. Major because this particular book is lengthy. Uh, In it, it has actually three parts, three sections that tell us a gospel message, and I'll get to some of that context uh, in a moment. A a powerful word for us today, turning to the 43rd chapter, beginning with verse 16, and I will read through verse 21. Here's what I want us to take from this scripture text, that God is a way maker. Hear now this word. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, and a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together, they shall not rise. They are extinguished, they are quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things, the prophet says, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beast of the field will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. Because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. Verse 21, this people I have formed for myself. They shall declare my praise. Church, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. So, church, there's a couple of things that I wanted to bring to your attention this morning uh, about uh, the book of Isaiah. Here's here's what I wanted to uh, begin with this morning. Uh, Isaiah, uh, his word, uh, this book, uh, is very moving. Uh, It's very powerful. And, And here's what I want you to know that his message is always consistent. Did you hear that? His message is always consistent. Isaiah was one of those prophets that was never swayed by man, never swayed by politics, never swayed by intimidation. God called this human being to speak his word, and he did that faithfully, and he did that diligently, and his message, you see, was always consistent. So I want you to know that firstly about uh, the prophet Isaiah. So if you would, just direct your attention to the screen. I want to give you a little bit of context about this book, since it is so lengthy. Uh, Just a couple of things. Uh, Take note of how many chapters there are, how many verses there are, but get this, just kind of a sum total, okay, of words. 
get that, 30, over 37,000 words in this one book, okay? So this is, this is quite, uh, uh, quite a powerful, quite a lengthy book of God's Word. A couple of other things that I wanted to bring to your attention here, and I just want to make some parallels, okay? Uh, just some observations. Look, look, at, look at Isaiah. So the first 39 chapters, okay, Kind of, kind of, just as a as a perspective here, like the thirty nine books of the Old Testament are filled with judgment. That is righteous judgment. You see, God always delivers righteous judgment upon who? Well, the immoral and idolatrous men. Now let's go to the final. 27 chapters of this book. The final 27 chapters, like the 27 books of the New Testament, they declare, you see, a message of hope. So in the Word of God, church, we need to know that there is judgment. There is righteous judgment. There is also hope that is in Jesus Christ. We also, you and I, need to know that we're held accountable, the Word of God says, and we're held accountable by and through the Word of God uh, as well. So we need to know uh, these highlights. We need to know these important parts about the Word of God. Let's continue with some other facts about Isaiah. Now get this, I found this interesting. Isaiah, okay, of course he's a prophet. He's a major prophet because of the length of this book, but get this, he was also considered the messianic prophet. Now what does that mean? If you read through the book of Isaiah, what you're going to notice is this particular prophet is pointing somewhere, you see. He's pointing us to the birth of Jesus Christ. He is pointing us, you see, to the Savior himself. Oftentimes, by the way, in the book, or excuse me, in the season of Lent, okay, we often go to the book of Isaiah and we select certain scriptures from Isaiah because, you see, this prophet is pointing us toward Jesus. That's very important. Get this. This prophet, Isaiah, he's also been considered the Paul of the Old Testament, okay? And now get this, the Shakespeare of the prophets. And, and, and I would just encourage you to go to this book, and I know we read from different translations because different translations speak to us, but this language is poetic, folks. I mean, it really, really is. It's moving, and when you read it, here's what, here's what I want you to know in advance. This will deepen your faith. This very book will deepen your faith when you're reading through it, when you're praying yourself through it. Shakespeare, Shakespeare had a way, did he not, with his language? It had meaning, it was poetic, it was beautiful, and so is Isaiah. So I wanted you to know that. Also, here's another thing that I wanted to mention here. Of course, the work of the prophet, right, was always to speak a word from heaven, from God, from the very mouth of the prophet. So, of course, the prophet was always telling the Israelite people in these kingdoms what they didn't want to hear, right? So, they, they, weren't, they weren't, in essence, very well liked, okay? Often they were criticized, often they were punished, often they, their lives were even taken from this earth, okay? They perished, okay? But they had a calling, you see, that God had placed on their hearts and anointed them with. Get this, Isaiah, okay, this prophet of the southern kingdom, this prophet was speaking oracles. Oracles is just another way of saying an authoritative word, an authoritative message. Get this, look how many kingdoms, look how many kingdoms there are that Isaiah was speaking to. I counted 11. Okay, some of these kingdoms, okay, still exist today. Others of these kingdoms do not, okay? Here's where I want to make it relevant, okay? The prophet's words, oh yes, it can speak to us today. It can speak to you and I personally. These, these kingdoms, okay, could very well be cities in the U.S. of A. or in the world today. This, this, these these names, these 
kingdoms could very well be modern day countries, you see, that the prophet could be speaking to today. What I'm getting at is this word from Isaiah, it's not a dead word, church. It's very much alive. It very much has meaning for us today if we're reading it and if we're listening to his warning. You see, a message of judgment, but also a message of hope. And I want you to know that. So here's the main content of what I'm going to get to this morning, okay? And I just want you to hear me say this, okay? Pay close attention to this. God is a way maker. Did you hear that? God is a way maker. God will always provide a way when you and I don't see the way forward. You see, God will always make a way forward. Let me go back to the word. Listen to this, okay? This is very important. This is what struck me this week as I was reading the text, and I'm going to read verse 16. Listen here. Thus says the Lord who makes, here it is, a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters. Did you hear it? God is a way maker. God will provide that way forward when you and I don't see it, when we literally are coming up against a wall or we're snagged or we're frustrated or we feel defeated. God will always provide the way. Now, I want to back that up with the word of God, okay? So let me give you some scriptures where God is always providing a way. God is a way maker even when we don't see it, church. Let's go to the word here. Let me firstly go to the book of Exodus, okay? You can look on the screen, okay? I'm just going to back this up with the word. Listen to this. The Red Sea was parted for the Israelites to safely pass through on dry ground and escape their enemy. When the Israelite people thought they were going to perish, okay, literally thought they were going to die because they were escaping slavery, what happened? God made a way. God made a way. Let's continue here. Remember that man, Daniel? Okay, very important in the word of God. There's a book named after him. Daniel 6, listen to this. When Daniel thought he was going to perish in the lion's den, listen to this, he shut the mouth, God did, the way maker of the lions for Daniel, who was shut in their den all night long so he could be a, get this, a living testimony to the faithfulness and almighty power of God, okay? In the lion's den, church, thought he was going to be devoured. And what happened? God made a way. A way maker, a way maker. Remember that. Let me continue. We move right through the Old Testament into the New Testament. God, as the way maker in his son, Jesus Christ, so listen to this. Here's what happens. Mark 4, 37 through 41. Pay attention to this. Jesus, you remember this story. He calms the storm with a simple command. No mere human can do this. Listen to this. A simple command of his voice, even the wind and the waves obey him, his followers said. Okay? Look that up there. It's in Mark 4, 37 through 41. Let me continue. Jesus also feeds the thousands of people who were hungry from, get this, only five loaves of bread and two fish. And he assured every man, woman, and child they would not leave hungry. And there, of course, of course, because God is a way maker there was an abundance left over. Only God can do that because he was a way maker. Let me continue here. Jesus also brought miracle healings everywhere that he went, did he not? We can just look through the scriptures. It's there, church. Let me just pinpoint a few, okay? Number one, he healed the lepers completely and wholly. Go to Luke 17, 11 through 19. He also restored a woman who was chronically bleeding for over 12 years, who, of course, was considered an outcast. What did Jesus do? He healed her. 
he healed her. You see, a way maker. When we don't see it, when we only see dark, when we only see defeat, when we only see frustration or temptation or devastation, what's God doing? What's God doing, church? He's making a way. The way maker. And he also, Jesus did, gave sight to a man born blind. And that's from John 9. And countless, countless, countless other powerful scriptures where God is making a way. Okay? Let me close with this, church. And I quote. Pay close attention to what I'm saying. And I want to speak to your heart for a moment. Pay close attention to your preacher. Let me speak to your heart. Okay? Let me quote. Sickness, financial problems, family issues, employment, unemployment, issues in society and politics, denominational trouble and strife. Am I talking to you, church? Is this speaking to one of you this day? These very things, listen to me, these very things, the enemy, the enemy will use these vulnerabilities and these divisions, pay attention, to attack you, church. You can bet on it. You can guarantee that the devil will use these vulnerabilities, use this dismay and division to attack you and I, to attack and to further a division. He will attack us. We've got to know that. That is no mere fantasy. That is not a fiction. That is absolutely a truth, that the devil will use our vulnerabilities and attack those very things. Now, listen to this. If left to our own devices, which basically means this, if we think, church, that by our own strength, our own know-how, our own willpower, that we're going to handle this and put on the armor and defeat the enemy himself. Listen to this. The enemy, church, will devour us, okay? If left to our own devices, okay? Filled with pride, if left to our own devices, the enemy will devour us. Scripture says that the enemy is like a roaring lion, church. He will devour us if left to our own devices. Listen, without someone, church, to correct our course, we will crash. We will crash. You can bet on it. You can bet on it. Churches, denominations, if left to our own devices, okay, we will crash. Look, without someone to direct our path, church, this is very key, without someone to direct our path, we are lost. It's no different than what the Bible says about the Israelite people who did escape Egypt and who were just wandering. You see, they were wandering because they were spiritually lost for 40 years, okay? Did you hear me, church? Without someone to direct our path, we are as good as lost. And when you are lost, let me tell you, that can be scary. That's frustrating. That is discouraging. That is just a place that we don't want to be. Listen, without someone to see us through the storm, we are just battered and wrecked. Did you hear that? We are just battered and wrecked on our own. So pay close attention to what I'm going to end with here. That is why, church, you and I always must have the way maker. That is God Almighty and his son Jesus Christ in our lives. Because they, God Almighty, Jesus Christ, the power and the fellowship and the movement of the Holy Spirit can always provide the way. You see, it's absolute truth that I'm speaking of and that you and I need to always be standing on. God Almighty 
is our way maker. Listen to this, and I'm going to close here. God will always, church, help you walk through the unthinkable. You want to know why? Because we were never meant to handle it on our own. I want to repeat that, okay? I want to repeat that, and then we're going to send this out. Listen to this. God will help you walk through the unthinkable. And you and I have had the unthinkable happen to us. It happens. That is life. Life will throw some nasty things our ways. Life will throw cruel things our way. And certainly the enemy has a big role in that as well. We will feel the sting of life. Church, what I'm telling you is don't be a victim. Be a victor, okay? Be a victor. Have a victor attitude. And how do you do that? Look, God will help you walk through the unthinkable because you, church, and I, together, were never meant to handle it, you see, on our own. God wants to be a part of our lives. Listen to verse 16 one more time. Here it is. Thus says the Lord, not your preacher. This is what the Almighty himself is saying. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea and a path through the mighty waters. That is you and I, and that is God who is the way maker, making a way for all. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, O oh God, Lord, we do get frustrated. Lord, we do get agitated. Lord, we are tempted. Lord, we do feel a sense of defeat. That is life, oh God. We have mountaintop moments. We have dark valley moments, and there's always the in-between. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that we always know when we are feeling frustrated, when we are feeling defeated, Lord, because the enemy is throwing flaming arrows, Scripture says, or life itself just has a sting and we get bit. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that our faith is not a faith of failure, but a faith of victory, that there is always victory in Jesus Christ, who is our way maker. Blessed be his name. Amen. Church, today is Communion Sunday, and that is very important for you and I, for believers around the world, because we, you and I, can experience grace, okay, in a very tangible way as we take it in. To receive Christ, to receive forgiveness, to receive his holy name that is eternal life and grace. What an experience that will be. So our kiddos are coming in this day because we very much believe in the United Methodist Church that children should partake of this blessed sacrament. So we have uh, holy words here that I'd like for you and I to uh, offer unto the Lord as a way of blessing and anointing our sacrament. So if you would, please join me. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Please join me. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Church, here now. 
Hear now this good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, church, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory be to God. Amen. <clears throat> church, the Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. In love you made us for yourself, and when you had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, your love remained steadfast. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Easter feast, that renewed by your word and sacraments, and fervent in prayer and works of justice and mercy, you may come to the fullness of grace that you have prepared for those who love you. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent in the fullness of time to redeem the world. Remember, church, Jesus Christ is the way maker. You see, he emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in our likeness. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. He took upon himself our sin and death and offered himself a perfect sacrifice for the sin of the whole world. By the baptism of his death, excuse me, suffering death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples. And he said this, church, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said this, drink from this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith now, church. Christ has risen. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all of the world until Christ comes in his final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father God, now and forever. Amen and amen.
Church, let me offer a word of prayer for us. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we have just experienced, Lord, your grace and how good it is. Lord, let us receive it with thanksgiving. You are the way maker, Lord, and we are thankful and grateful unto you. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Church, in just a moment, we will sing our final hymn. So let me just put this invitation out there. If you feel led by the Holy Spirit to come and to pray at the chancel rail, I always want you to know that that is readily available to you. I would be honored to pray with you if you so choose. Also, if you would like to join our church or profess your faith in Jesus Christ. Sorry, I'm still swallowing my bread. <clears throat> please come forward and we will celebrate that moment with you in profession or in joining. Let us stand together and sing a very appropriate praise song, Waymaker.
Church, let's give a big hand to the Gap Band. You sounded wonderful. Thank you, folks. What a blessing you are. Folks, I, I want to introduce you to Mike and Dot Brantley, and they have felt led to come and to join our church. They are family of David Brantley. Look at David. He's just beaming back there. What a blessing this is. So they have come and they said, you know, this is the church home for us. So praise God for that. And we are so glad to have you as professing members now. So in the United Methodist Church, there's two questions that as your pastor, I'm going to ask of you. The first is the faith question. And it's simply this, but it's a very important one. It's a profession of faith, a reaffirmation of faith, if you will. So I'll ask it in this way, and your response can be yes. Do you once again reaffirm that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior of your life? Amen. Amen. The second is the, the uh, membership question, and, and it's simply this. As professing members of Benton United Methodist Church, will you give of your time, your talents, your prayers, uh, your service, your witness, and your gifts as God gives you the grace to do? Will you do that? Amen. Amen. And praise God. So I'm going to extend to you the right hand of Christian fellowship as a way of welcoming you. If you would, please join me at the door. And I know the church would like to say welcome as well. God bless you and welcome now as the newest members to Benton United Methodist Church. God bless you. Now, let me offer a word of prayer for us, and then you can come join me at the door. Let us go to the Lord, church. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, you are the way maker. Lord, you make that path, Lord, righteous, and you make it, Lord, uh, so enticing through the power of the Holy Spirit to join you to walk with you. You are our Father in heaven, and we say thank you, Lord. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Seven years old, third row pew, John 3, 16, something changed in me. Red letters running off the page, flooding my heart with amazing grace. I knew then I believed, and those roots run deep. Oh, I've been through some faith shaking hard times, yeah. But nothing's gonna make me forget. Every one of those Sunday sermons, every time that choir would sing, I could hear my Savior calling, telling me how much He loves. We're gonna try to take me out of that church, but you can't take the church out of me. Gonna have my worries, well that's part of life. But when I think of those stories about what my God can do, still moving like it did back then. Born again, people gonna get an amen. We've all seen the proof. He makes all things new, even all those faith shaking hearts. Yeah, I never want to stop remembering Every one of those Sunday sermons Every time that choir would sing I could hear my Savior calling Telling me how much He loves me No matter what the world throws at me I know His word is true It all started with heart stirring Spirit moving Sunday sermon Never gonna try to take me out of that church But you can't take the church out of me Try to take me out of that church, but you can't take the church out of me.
Devil gonna try to take me out of that church But you can't take the church out of me Devil gonna try to take me out of that church But you can't take the church out of me Devil gonna try to take me out of that church But you can't take the church out of me Devil gonna try to take me out of that church But you can't take the church out of me